Here's a f- kind of a fun one. Uh, supernatural senses. Carnivores experience a heightened mm-hmm. awakening of their five senses akin to superhuman perception. Um, <laughs> I've heard many reports of this. I know we joke a little bit, but like for myself, um, well, I, Dr. Jordan Peterson famously talked about lion diet on Joe Rogan, and he said floaters in his eyes cleared up. I've had a bunch of people mm-hmm. on my channel say that their vision has improved. Um, for me, it's like... Uh, my sense of hearing and um, smell seemed to improve. I don't know, during the 2020, all that fun that went on, I kind of lost my sense of smell. It came back when I was eating the proper human diet. And uh, it seems like, yeah, like I'm listening to music or something now. It's like I can hear the guitar. I can hear uh, the drums. I can hear everything. I don't know if it's just because I don't have that brain fog anymore, but um, yeah. is there any sort of science behind that? I've heard several people report that their senses seem a lot better uh, eating the proper human diet. Well, I mean, a lot of your, your senses can be more refined. And certainly if, if, if you think about taste, a lot of people have a much more refined sense of taste. And that could just be that their, their palate is, is becoming more refined and, and, and sensitive to the nutrients that are actually good for them. Yeah, I, my sense of sweetness is very heightened. So if I have a glass of milk, it's, it just tastes like ice cream. It tastes like I'm just drinking liquid ice cream. And, um, you know, that's why I, I tend to avoid milk because <laughs> like, I'm going to want to drink more of that because it tastes like ice cream and it's, and it's delicious. But others that, that then go back and maybe have their, like their favorite treat or their favorite cookie. Like I've, I've never done this because I don't care to, but they say that they go back to that and it, it doesn't taste good. It, it sort of tastes gross and it's just way too sweet. And it's just it's an offensive taste because you know, their, their tastes have changed. And some people, oh, I just, I don't like meat and I need all these spices on it. It's like, well, maybe for now, but your taste of, taste will, will change. I always tell people that. And over the course of a few weeks, you just start really appreciating just the taste of meat itself and with or without salt, whatever your preference is. And it's, it, it's a much more heightened sense in that regard. So there's something, there's something changing there. And certainly eyesight improves in a lot of people. I have had Time and time and time and time again, people message me or comment in in my lives or in my comment section that they're that they don't need glasses anymore. They go to their ophthalmologist, and their their prescription improves, and it's 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 absolutely amazing. There's um there there, and and then things like macular degeneration. I mean, there's a number of ophthalmologists in the sort of keto carnivore space that are saying you you can just reverse this. Uh, mac, macular degeneration is one is is I think the leading cause of uh, of you know blindness of, of non-congenital blindness right so you know this is a major 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 issue and your your diet and lifestyle can absolutely play a factor and completely reverse that or prevent that um there's a, a doctor um we'd mean if i'm not mispronouncing her name she's she's an ophthalmologist she talks about this and how this is, is that you, you actually can reverse a lot of uh, vision issues and improve your vision, come off glasses or improve your prescription and even improve uh, cataracts and things like that. Cataracts can be com- caused from glycation. You know, all the different damage to your body that high levels of blood sugar cause can also damage, what well, can damage your retina, but it can also damage your, your lens. And fructose specifically is much more uh, uh, glycative than, than even glucose is, especially to your to your lens and that can cause opacification which we call cataracts and generally have to remove that and so this is this is something that people are seeing um i i, I don't know about the hearing i think i'm still pretty you know half deaf <laughs> like that's what i when i'm operating with people i just like i'm just like can you speak the f up i cannot <laughs> hear you you know so um but um I've certainly noticed it in my taste for myself, and and I can I cannot tell you how many people have told me that they've improved their their vision and even stopped having to use glasses. It's pretty amazing. Superhuman brain power. Uh, the brain, a powerhouse of energy, seems to thrive for most carnivores who often report improved cognition and clarity. What is the reason behind this? Well, there's going to be a lot of reasons why. You know, one of the, the again going back to the fundamental principles of you're just getting rid of toxins that are harmful to you, and some of those things are harmful to your brain. They're going to cause brain fog. They're going to cause uh, you know, poor 
you know, physio what they're going to cause physiological stress to your brain as well as the rest of your body. So, you know, just you just eat this thing, it's not just affecting your body. You know, last time I checked, the brain is actually part of the body. So, you know, you put these harmful chemicals in your body, it's going to affect your brain and, and nervous system as well. So, you're getting rid of these these things that can negatively affect your brain and your cognition and memory, etc. But a very major uh, side of that coin is that now you're you're actually providing the proper nutrition to support your brain health as well. So when just being in a state of ketosis, you're having more ketones, provides your brain its optimal energy. The majority of cells in your brain, not all of them, but the majority of your brain prefer ketones and they, and they will run exclusively on ketones if enough ketones are available. So why do I say this? Everybody says that you need to eat glucose and sugar because your brain runs on, on glucose and sugar. Your brain only runs on glucose and sugar if you are not getting enough ketones, right? So that's a secondary fuel source, okay? So why do I say that? Because when you have an abundance of glucose and abundance of ketones, your brain will only run on the ketones, even though there's enough glucose there. So that's a preference. So it only runs on the ketones if there's enough ketones available. But when there's not enough ketones, it will start running on glucose as a secondary fuel source. So that means it's a preference, your brain prefers it. You can also get you know, insulin resistance or you know, it's called peripheral insulin resistance. That's a hallmark of type 2 diabetes. Basically, the, the sugar is not getting in into your cells as readily anymore. You need more and more insulin to get the same, the same effect, right? And so that is something that can apply to your brain as well. And so over the years and the decades, you're just not getting enough energy into your brain, not getting enough nutrients in your brain, and your brain slowly decays and, and uh, atrophies. Then you switch over to a ketogenic diet. All of a sudden, ketones can cross the blood-brain barrier freely. They don't need insulin. And then phew, your brain wakes up. And so you know, a ketogenic diet, like a carnivore diet, has been shown to be a better treatment in clinical trials in humans, a better treatment for Alzheimer's, people with active Alzheimer's, than every medication ever trial for Alzheimer's. And people like Hal Cranmer are actually reversing people's dementia and Alzheimer's and diabetes and heart, blood pressure issues and all these other sorts of things by putting them on keto carnivore diet. If they can get them on a carnivore diet, he does. If you can just get keto, he does. It's whatever they're able to do. But it's that metabolic state change that can help their brain uh, work much better. The ketones actually cross the blood brain barrier and can reconstitute into uh, fatty acids. And these can actually be used as the physical structures of the brain as well. So in the short term, you're getting better nutrient for your brain. So your brain is turning on, but it's also long-term helping to rebuild and grow your brain. This is why it's vitally important for kids to be in ketosis. Ch children in the womb are in ketosis. Infants who are breastfeeding, even though there's plenty of lactose in breast milk, they are in a state of ketosis. Kids are much it's much more easy. It's much easier for them to get into a state of ketosis because they have to be in ketosis because that is how their brain grows. And so we're giving them all this sugary crap. Oh, they like it. They'd like cocaine too. What is wrong with you? Don't give it to them. This is damaging them. And so they give them this sugary stuff, this carb filled stuff because, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. A lot of carbs, a lot of healthy glucose for the brain. No, you need healthy ketones for the brain, especially for young, young children whose brains are developing and growing because A, it's the optimal source, it's the preferred energy source. And um, secondly, because this they actually reconstitute into fatty acids and, and can help grow the brain. And then you're also getting all the essential fatty acids that the brain requires. Your brain is made out of, there's a large portion of your brain made out of cholesterol. You have 60 to 70% of your brain, of the physical structures of your brain are made out of fat. 20% of your of your brain is made out of DHA, which is a, a, an omega-3 fatty acid, an essential omega-3 fatty acid that only exists in, in animal fat, does not exist in plants. We don't really make it very well ourselves. We need this from the animal tissue that we eat. And people say, well, there's plenty of omega-3s in plants. Look at flaxseed oil. There's, you know, 30% or so is of their of their flaxseed oil is, is omega-3s, right? That's ALA, not DHA. It doesn't convert into DHA or EPA uh, properly, or even if at all. There's, there's mixed reports on that, but there's plenty of accounts that say it doesn't change at all. And if it does, it's 
barely any. So it's not enough anyway. And so people say, well, we need omega threes. And, and so, you know, that one's fine. And they lose sight of this because it's a marketing gimmick. They say, oh, healthy omega threes. I need omega threes. That's omega threes. Well, that's like saying we need water. Water's a liquid. So any liquid's fine. Vodka. Let's just drink vodka all the time. No, you need water. That's what you need. And as far as you, you yes, you need an omega three, but you need a specific omega three. You need a couple of specific omega threes, DHA and EPA. And then all the fat soluble vitamins and all these other sorts of things. So you're giving your brain proper nutrition, proper energy metabolism, and you're also relieving all the, the constant pressure and stress of these different toxins that are that are harmful to your brain. So all these things combined, your brain works better, your body works better. Yeah, you mentioned kids. That's one thing that gets me kind of fired up. I, I think hopefully like a couple decades from now, hopefully sooner, we'll look back and be like, what the hell were we doing with that? You go in the grocery store and all these cereal boxes with cartoon characters on it and getting kids hooked on sugar, like a drug mm -hmm. addict from a young age, they're lifelong sugar consumers and it's just been completely normalized. And it's not normal. I, no. I, I heard the saying that sugar lights up on an MRI, just like cocaine or a hard drug does. And uh, yeah. getting getting kids hooked on it early. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. It, it, gives, it gives a dopamine response to the addiction center, centers of the brain, like the reward centers of the brain. And uh, it does this to uh, yeah, so just like cocaine, heroin, and meth would. And their MRI studies, you know, Dr. Robert Lustig of UCSF, you know, has reported on these and, and written about these, how the fructose specifically is, is what gives this dopamine response. And that on studies with MRIs, they show that sugar addicts and meth addicts, they kill the same areas of the brain. So the, the fructose kills the same areas of the brain as meth to the same extent as meth, right? So this is this is a horrible drug. It also is metabolized in the liver into the same breakdown products as alcohol. And this provides the same damage to the liver and the body as alcohol. So fatty liver disease, cirrhosis, diabetes, heart disease, even implicated in cancer, Alzheimer's and many other diseases. And so it's killing the area, the brain like meth. And it's destroying the body like alcohol. I mean, this is this is one of the worst drugs known to man. It doesn't even it's not even a good drug. It doesn't even it's not even fun. You know, <laughs> like yeah, you know, some of these other things would be. I mean, you, you can say what you like, but you know, just observing people that that are addicted to various drugs. I mean, they're giving up their life. They're living under bridges. They're sharing dirty needles. They're doing things. They're 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 putting themselves under various horrible conditions in order to get the drug that they're seeking. I mean, you, you don't give up your family and your life and your health for something that's okay, pretty good. You, you do that for something that's incredible. And that's, that's what you want to revolve your life around. Right. So there's, there's, there's a, a lot of, uh, of, of reward that they get for that damage to their body, to them. Is that, are people willing to give up their job and their life and their family and their, and their, um, their humanity for sugar? Like I, I don't think so. I wouldn't anyway, you know, so like what, but we're doing very similar damage to our body as alcohol and drugs and things like that would. And we're doing this to our kids. We're giving this to children. I mean, at the very least, sugar should be recognized as a drug and, and age restricted. I mean, kids should not be anywhere near this stuff. And so I honestly think that, that the sugar trade now is, is the new opium trade. And just people don't realize it. They don't realize just how toxic this stuff is. But people are making vast empires and fortunes backed on the misery and illness of humanity because of sugar. Yeah. Yeah. You go to the grocery store, there's 60,000 products. Almost every one of them has sugar in it. That's one of the toughest right. things, too, because it's become this social norm that, ah, oh, it's just fine. Grandma gives you sugar, birthday cakes on birthdays, and it's just fine. But breaking those social norms is really hard to do for a lot of people because everyone's just like, ah, oh, it's just always, it's always kind of been that way. But I don't know, I mentioned it earlier. Uh, the, the positive deviant thing is when you look around, you see people that who aren't, who's not doing sugar and they, Oh, by the way, they're absolutely thriving. Um, you got to elevate yeah. those voices and hopefully at some point that'll break some of those social norms. Cause yeah, it's, it's crazy with kids. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Give them sugar in the morning and then they're hooked the rest of the day and the rest of their lives.